Osborne. Episode 12. Written by Colin Brake. Ah, Mrs. Shandola. I trust everything is in order with the accommodation? Please. Call me Pia, Mr. Madani. In that case, I'm Farhad. Then I'm delighted to tell you, Farhad, that everything is just perfect. It's a truly lovely apartment and so tastefully decorated. An artist's eye. Of course. And have you had any more thoughts on the length of your stay? You said you might want to take the apartment long term. I'm still thinking about it. It's difficult. My family are still coming to terms with my sister's death. Especially young Jeet. Perhaps if I stick around, I can help a little. And Greenbourne is such an interesting place. How so? Well, on the surface, it seems so quiet. But if you take a moment to look deeper, well, there's so much going on. So many buried secrets. In my experience, buried secrets are best left that way. I'm sure you're right. On the apartment, uh, if you could let me know soon, I'd appreciate it. I do have inquiries for next month, so... Let me see how this weekend goes, and then I'll let you know. Would that be acceptable? Perfectly. What on earth are you doing here? I've come to take over so you can swan around at the fair and collect your prize. That nice Mr. Madani is going to paint my portrait. I don't think he's going to have done that overnight. But there's a prize-giving ceremony, isn't there? You don't want to miss your moment in the spotlight, do you? But you shouldn't be here. You're not well. Honestly, I'm fine. You look a bit hot to me. I've been working out. I'm serious. Have you taken your temperature? Tani! Book a test. I haven't got you know what. And you know that how? I don't feel that bad. Look, I know we all act like it's all over, but that virus hasn't gone away. Book a test. And stay at home. Really? It's the right thing to do. For everyone. I'm not that bad. Today's the first big social event for over a year. The last thing we need is you making it into a super spreader event. Mind your backs. Coming through. Pop a time there, Lewis. Thanks. So what's this then? Cake stall? No flies on you, are there, Lewis? Oh, Evie, where are you planning to set up the fireworks? Logan's handling the pyrotechnics. I understand he's keeping them under lock and key until tonight, for safety's sake. Fireworks at the summer fete? That's new. Well, since you had none at bonfire night or New Year's Eve, it seemed a good idea. Lewis, could you help me set out these cakes? Any chance of a sample for a hard-working volunteer? On your bike. Talking of which... Vicar? Hi all, sorry I'm late. Had to visit a sick parishioner. How are we doing? Everything is ticking over marvellously. Just like that magnificent machine of yours. I never realised that you were a biker, Vicar. Do I hear a note of disapproval, Evie? Not at all. If anything, what you're hearing is jealousy. Is that a Triumph Thraxton? It certainly is. Oh, I've had many a fine hour on the back of a Triumph. That conjures up mental images I could do without. Young man, there's more to this old bird than meets the eye. May I take a closer look, Maggie? Be my guest. It's open. Ah, good morning. I'm in need of your handyman skills. Sorry, I was just in the shower. And you leave your door unlocked? <laughs> it's Greenbourne, not New York City. I don't feel the need to hide behind a locked door 24-7. Of course. I'm still getting used to the way of life here. You've lived in more dangerous places. You'd be surprised. But I'm here to talk taps, not home security. What can I do for you? My tenant complained of a dripping tap. I was hoping that might be something you could sort out for me. Doesn't sound too complicated. Is there any chance you could look at it now? Of course. Uh, let me go and get dressed. I'll wait. If that's OK. Sure. Hmm. Let's see. Perfect. Well done, Vicar. I do believe we have a roaring success on our hands. 
<laughs> I couldn't have done it without you, Evie. And, of course, the rest of the volunteers. I think we all need this. It's been such a hard time for everyone. But it's going to take more than a summer fete and a music festival. Of course. Some of the effects of this pandemic are going to take years to recover from. But people are resilient. I have hope. Your daughter seems very happy. Lisa? Oh, she does, doesn't she? It's nice to see a smile on Arjun's face again, too. Logan, where have you been? Uh, sorry, I'm running late. Had a little job to do, and now I seem to have misplaced my watch. How very careless of you. <sighs> it's really not like me at all. I wish it was on the table at home, but I must have left it somewhere. I wouldn't worry, Logan. I'm always forgetting where I put things down. I can confirm that. Forgetful is your middle name. Now, is that any way to talk about your mother? Thank you, Arjun. Excuse me. What have you got there? Fresh supplies from the cafe. The cakes are selling like, well, hotcakes. Oh, we'd better get over there then before these sell out too, eh, hey, Evie? After you, Vicar. When did those two become best buddies? I don't know. Mother doesn't make friends easily. Maybe she's getting less prickly in her old age. <laughs> I somehow doubt that. Come on, then. You're going to win me a cuddly unicorn or what? Really? Oh, go on, Arjun. How hard can it be? Why don't you show me how it's done? <sighs> Maybe later. I'm going to go see if I left my watch at the pub. Oh, it's a bit quiet. Everyone's at the fight, I guess, like your mum. Why don't you go and have a rest, Dad? Save your energy for the gig. I'll be fine. You should rest that leg of yours. Stop fussing. I'm not an invalid. Much. Ah, oh, a customer! Uh, sorry, not today. I was just wondering if I'd left my watch here. Your watch? Uh, when I stayed over the other night, when you were in the hospital. You took all your stuff. But I'll look again. Wait here. <sighs> Could be a right grumpy bear, that father of yours. Tell me about it. Not much fun growing up with a copper as your dad. No kidding. I remember one time there was crayon all over the lounge wall and he went all line of duty on us. Hmm, I can imagine. Mr. Madani, fancy seeing you here. Where else would I be? Home in bed, perhaps? Maybe later. Sounds like a plan. But we must be discreet. Alan can be like a terrier after a rat when he gets an idea into his head. So let's use that to help us create a smoke screen. How do you mean? I've acquired Logan's watch. I thought I might leave it somewhere for Alan to find. Shift his focus to another suspect. Farhan? Ah, my latest tenant. You know Mrs. Godwin from the pub, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I'm sorry if I interrupted something. Not at all. We were just chatting. I was just going to thank you for sending Logan round earlier. No problem. It's odd, though. I hadn't even noticed that there was a dripping tap. The last tenant mentioned it, and it slipped my mind. Well, all sorted now. But if that's the level of service I can expect, then I will definitely stay for longer. Shall we say eight more weeks? For now? Consider it booked. I think there's so much more here for me to enjoy. At the fate? In Greenport. Nice to meet you. Something odd about that one. Don't get paranoid. I am, though. And you're not helping. You need to take that watch back. But... Uh... No buts. Giving Alan a different suspect still puts him on high alert. And neither of us want that, do we? One, two. A one, two. Touch of feedback there. Let me just uh, tweak that. Once a roadie, always a roadie. Uh, try that. Sweet. Is it? You're usually a happy bunny with a guitar in your hands. <sighs> it's nothing. Well, clearly not. Oh, I'm probably just being paranoid, but Bev's acting oddly. Oh, are you still on that horse? Logan was sniffing around earlier, said he'd lost his watch. And that's a crime because? It just reminded me how much he was around here while I was in hospital. Oh, I've told you before, mate, you need to rein in that imagination of yours. 
So was Alan excited? Excited? For the gig. Well, it's not like he's headlining. He's just kicking it off. Still, must be nice for him to be performing again. Well, you say that. Personally, if I have to hear his version of Smoke on the Water one more time... What's that? It was on the mat downstairs. No stamp, so hand-delivered. Hmm. That's odd. Photos? Yeah. Uh, from the paper. I wanted copies of the new pub sign being put up. Oh, lovely. Sorry, Sandra. There's something I need to do. I I I'll catch up with you later, yeah? Whatever. But you don't want to miss Alan's set, do you? I'll be back before he finishes American Pie. Don't worry. Thank you. That's really kind of you. I guess you must have taken it off when you were working at the apartment. I suppose. Although, to be honest, there wasn't much of a drip to fix. Well, I'm glad you were able to sort it out for me. And I'm relieved to have my watch back. Family heirloom. Do you fancy a drink? A tea, coffee, or maybe something a little stronger? Now that sounds promising. Excuse me a moment. Hello, yes? I'm at the radio station. All set? Yeah, you're good to go, mate. Good crowd in. Have you seen Bev? Apparently she had to pop out. Pop out? Yes, she said she had something urgent to sort out at the radio station. Are you okay? Nowhere near. We need to talk. Let's step in here. Now, what's all this about? This. Where did you get this? Left at the pub. Addressed to me. These don't prove anything. You want to show them to Alan and see what he thinks? It's an embrace. I'm a touchy-feely foreigner. There's more. The note with it said they have sound recordings. And that's all? No demands? Not yet. We were talking of taking a trip. Maybe we should just go. I can't just walk out on my marriage like that. Why not? Is this just a bloody game to you? No. Of course not. This could ruin everything. No. It's nothing. Look. See? Our problem is already going. In the rubbish where they belong. Well, Dad, you're finally getting the hang of those crutches. Oh, needs must. Do you reckon you might be able to help me move these fireworks? Is, is your mum here? Yeah, she went in a few minutes ago. Right. Stay here. What? Just do as I say. You go on ahead. We shouldn't be seen leaving together. Of course. Hey. Logan? Where are you? What's he doing here? He can't find us together like this. Quick, in the studio. But... Don't argue. Keep your head down, so he can't see us from the office. We just have to sit this out. This is madness. Shh. <sighs> Logan. Al, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be rocking around the clock right now? I'm looking for my wife. Bev? She's not with you? No. What's that? Oh, no. That's the smoke alarm from my office. What? Where the fireworks are. We need to get out of here. No, stay calm. Stay calm. There's smoke coming under the door. Okay, okay. Come on. It's stuck. I can't open it. Episode 12 was written by Colin Brake. Alan Godwin was John Altman. Beverly Godwin was Corinne Wicks. Sam Sharma, Pal Aaron, Evie Lejeune, Louise Jameson. Farhad Madani, Rad Rawi. 
Pia Chandola, Bhavnisha Palmer, Tani Jefferson, Amy Roxon, Matt Jefferson, Ali Zane, Lewis Godwin, Finley Pyle, Sandra Davis, Neve McGrady, Maggie Roberts, Laura Shaven, Logan Coburn, Joshua Manning, Lisa Lejeune, Ali Murphy, Arjun Sharma, Raj Gatak, Daisy Godwin, Lucy Fish, and the Tannoy announcer was Andrew James Spooner. Other roles were played by members of the cast. Greenborn was devised by Colin Brake, based on an original idea by Colin Brake and Andrew Mark Sewell. Greenborn FM stationed sound by Diva Web. Original music, Tim Arnold. Sound design and post-production, Kirsty Gilmore. The studio manager was Wilfredo Acosta. Series producer was Helen Quigley. And the director, Andrew Mark Sewell. Greenborn was a B7 media production made with the support of the Audio Content Fund. Visit Greenborn online at greenborn.co.uk.